Hello everybody, welcome to episode five of the box office. We're still here in magical Marseille. Jean de Villiers is gonna, still gonna be my co-host and guest. Skalkberg is off at the Alfred Dunhill, playing some good golf, we hope. We've got today another Skalk with us, a little one, mini me. Mini Skalk. Mini Skalk, yeah, come here, mini Skalk. Come here, come into shot here. Yeah? He's got a vest that's just covering his nipples. He's gonna be joining us on episode five of the box office, which is now open. Back at Marseille at the villa, the beautiful villa out here. Good weather as usual. Jean de Villiers is still here. Skulk Burger at the Alfred Dunhill. So we've replaced him with uh, Mini Me. He's here wearing a vest <laughs> and he's got his John Dharma sunglasses on. How come, how come you didn't get the invite to the, to the Alfred Dunhill? You, you're, a good go you're a better golfer. Um, I would say we're young Paul. I would say we're young Paul. Okay. Okay. But, but Fouri Dupree or you, who's a better golfer? Oof. I'll, I'll give him that. Is it? You'll give him that? Yeah, but I can shape the ball both ways. He can only hit a draw. A.B. de Villiers, and you? Uh, A.B., naturally talented individual there. Jacques Callis, and you? I, oh, I don't want to no, back no, myself no, no, here. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> Roy, 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 the only guy that I would uh, that I would have a proper go at is Louis Oosthuizen, I think. Is it? Mm. He's from Mossel Bay. I'm from Mossel Bay. Okay, you know? local news. Yeah. <laughs> local news. How's, how's France been so far? I only arrived like three days ago, watched South Africa versus Tonga uh, with the kids, the missus. It's been good. Weather's great. Went to the beach yesterday. Um, people wear a lot less clothes there than in South Africa, I would say. My boys came up to me and said, Scala, what's going on here? <laughs> or Daddy, what's happening here? I said, yeah, but more liberal, yeah. Is it? Mm. So how are you out at three in the morning if you've got your wife and kids here? We heard about you after the Tonga game. Yeah, well, they were partying and I just followed <laughs> their streamline. <laughs> Can I you sitting on a cushion to get like a bit of a bit height? height. Or yeah, look, one eight one is is quite small. I don't, I don't know why you're giving me grief. You've got actually mean well now bigger me, yeah, <laughs> sitting next to me. <laughs> She's that, shorter than me. It seems <laughs> as if Shimmy uh, swallowed you. <laughs> he hasn't grown, but he's grown yeah. this grown way, one, not that way. <laughs> Jean, you had a, a brow off in Toulon with Skulk Burger. You know, you you guys were obviously missing. South Africa? It was. Uh, it was, you know, not, not the traditional South African briar. So we had to do the, the gas briar thing, which, which we're not used to. The meat, probably not the, the cuts that we used to either. Um, Who won? But, but getting in a, a, a good dose of, of protein, of meat, which, yeah. Better which behave be now that the families are around, I suppose. I, you Quite know, I always behave. Um, <laughs> be looking after your kids. You know, so well, okay, let's, I'm not let's, looking let's, after, let's, I'm let's, not let's, looking after Skulk okay. yeah, exactly. well. So Skulk went to the Alfred Dunhill, he left yes. his wife and kids with you. So I'm taking my family of eight, <laughs> my two wives and five kids, I have to take them home back to South Africa. Thank well, you. I would tell you what he said at dinner last night, to yeah. be honest with you. No, I can't, I can't repeat that. Because Skulk might be on the first flight back from the Alfred Dunhill. No, I, no, I, you, know, you know I didn't say anything. But good to catch up with uh, Gregan and Marshall also. It was good. Yeah. Was, uh, look, we, we've said it so many times. I think that's the beauty of, of the World Cup. It, it, it brings together all the, all the has-beens. You know, whether you played together, whether you played against each other, you, uh, you get together, you celebrate rugby, you have a couple of drinks, and, and it's just good times. It's, uh, I think the, the rugby fraternity, which is, you know, amazes me, um, you know, more and more, the older I get, uh, you know, we have this common thing of rugby bringing us all together and you play it bloody hard. But, geez, we, we've got the ability to have lots of good times off the field. Uh, and even more so if you're retired. Yeah, let's, let's talk hookers now. Yeah. The you're, ball hookers. You're let's talk hookers. <laughs> this, uh, this head boy speech is actually quite boring. Yeah. Yeah. I was falling asleep. Yeah, he wants yeah. us to hold hands yeah. or what now? Okay, yeah. thank you. We enjoyed each other's company. We yeah. know each other well. Great rugby fraternity. Yeah, great bro. rugby fraternity. Yeah. Let's talk about the hookers, the, the ball <laughs> hooker situation. You've obviously been watching it. From far, what what are your thoughts, eh? With with Dion he's used and obviously to that. He's used to watching it from far. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is true, though. I mean, I've only played fifteen test matches, and I probably went on every tour since two thousand and eight. Well, yeah. a couple of years. Um, well, now that you've finished talking about yourself, let's talk about the hooker situation. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Is this the eye talk or uh, Definitely not. <laughs> um, hooker situation, Malcolm Mark's biggest loss going, well, in the World Cup. Um, Bongi time, hopefully he doesn't get injured. Um, but currently, 
rashi has got a plan. He's, he said, listen, we'd rather bring Andre Pollard in. Uh, we need probably <coughs> someone to, as a backup from that perspective, he thinks Dion can do the job and he's back Dion. Yeah. Um, hard to put Eskom on as, well, he played a couple of minutes against Tonga. It's just hard to, at this level, to throw that ball in when the opposition's going up. It, it's a very delicate skill and it, it's hard to expect. I don't blame Eskom for doing, well, trying to. He's, he's trying to get there. He scrums well, it looks like. Yeah, he's, got the, he's got the right props. Yeah. That, that, that's one thing. If you've got a whole new bomb squad coming on, that will l make you look good. Yeah. But it, it's, a, it's a hard position to be in. Is it? What's your, your take on the 7 1 split? Do I ignore him? I can see him. He's, <laughs> Guys, he's, he's, he's seriously. seriously. <laughs> Do you want viewership to go? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like the final show. Okay, ever. let's talk about the centers then. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Andre Estreiser. I mean, he was probably one of the best players, but Dion Free. Yeah. He didn't even mention that. Dion, man of the match. On the weekend, starting for the first time. Andre Estreiser, unbelievable. Oh, are you, are you going to start okay, okay, John, let, let me put it this. Playoff time now. Yeah. It's Going next to week. the um, Island game. <coughs> your your centre partnership. Who, who do you put in the mix? And fly off. And fly off. Who's asking the questions here? I'm, I'm just It's your first in. show, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's your first show. Relax. He wants to take... He's exactly. Kind of he competitive take because game. both hookers and I want your spot. <laughs> <laughs> he's gunning for I it. I can't fully spot though. No, Dave, <laughs> you, you, you go... So obviously, Lacanya Am's been... Um, you know, and again, spare thoughts for Makazola Mapimpi um, yeah. out of the World Cup. Um, you know, let, let's not go too deep into that but I mean massive influence also what, what, what he's done just in the last you know six years or, or, or yeah. so um, Lucanio Am replacing him which again I think a smart smart move by the management but going into a, a quarter final I've got no doubt they'll go Damien Delende Jesse Krill trying and test it now they've played together they, they, they Am is back also right? Yes Okay so he sits he's on ice He hasn't played yeah. uh, I think that it'll be the same approach as with Hando when he yeah. came in you know so so even though Lucania has been part of the squad for such a long time, you know, you're now out of it for six weeks, yeah. six, seven weeks. Um, and things change during that period. So it takes time to get, you know, get used to the, um, the playbook, um, subtle changes that they might have had within that environment. And, and he hasn't played. So you don't know where he's at from a, from a quality point of view. So um, Andre Est hasn't been amazing, but Damien Delen has been just as good. So... No reason not to select him, and the partnership with Jesse has been working. So, and at ten, what what do you think? What's the thinking? No, there? they'll 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 definitely select the best player for the position. <laughs> not commercial as usual. At least at Hocker, we can say Bongi no. will be starting and Joffrey so, will be on the bench. So again, I, I think it will be make a call. <clears throat> I think it will be. I don't think it's it's just make a call who's going to play. I think yeah. it's what strategy will they have for the game? What will the approach be? Will they kick at goal and and apply pressure in that way, scoreboard pressure, or will they, when they get penalties, kick it out and apply pressure in a different way through mauling and the rest of their set phases? If that is the case, then I think they'll go money. If they if they want to be able to create scoreboard pressure through three six nine whatever, then Andre. Um, Money's two kicks very good, eh? What's Remember that? last the week before we were talking about the kicking yep. issue. A week later, two from the corner, straight it's down pressure. the middle. It's yeah. pressure, though. You know, when the pressure's off, um, I don't think that's that's the moment where you need to be judging a guy. Yeah. I think it's when the pressure's on. So, uh, f for me, it seems as if Andre's in a really good space. It seems as if, also, you know, Marty's been playing fantastic rugby, and that's why we've said for so long, separate the kicking from the player itself. Um, but now also the third element to that is what, what will the pro approach be? What will the game plan be? How do they want to apply pressure? Um, and, then, and then select your team accordingly. The fact that we've got two guys now that can fill that spot. Um, is a nice headache to Yes, and I think both will be in the 23. So you'll probably, I think we might revert back to a 5-3 in terms of the team selection. You think so, Skala? You, you were part of the original bomb squad, the whole 6-2 split. What, what's the messaging in camp? around the bomb squad? What was the thinking behind it, the original thinking? Now, in the beginning, we thought Rassi was absolutely bonkers Yeah. to go for a 6-2 split. But then he's, he, he sells, sold the proposition very well. He yeah. said, this is the reason why we're doing it. We can have a whole new pack on. This is how we're going to play strategically. And on, on, on your point on, on strategy, 
that was weird when we played Ireland because we we picked that specific split yeah. and we went for posts. Yeah. We, against New Zealand, we p- picked that strategy, 7-1 split, and we kicked for the corner. So that was quite weird from that perspective. But John is still, he's giving all the permutation, but he, he didn't say what he's... View no, that's why he's here for yeah. his opinion, not not the. We don't even know. We don't even know we're playing against yet. So how can you select a team if you don't even know who you're playing against? Okay, what's going to happen? You Ireland, answer, Scotland. You what's answer. going to happen between Ireland and Scotland? Ireland will win. Okay, okay so, so we'll then we play France. We play France. Uh, okay, so we yeah, play but, France. But we don't know that. Oh well, okay. There's a 99 percent probability. No, like, do, do you know that 90 percent of all stats gets made up on the in this, on the like spot? Like this one, but there is a probability. Scala, okay, let's go back. Yeah. 2019, you yes. had retired, right? Mm. Again. And back in the mix. Oh, how many retirements did he have? <laughs> one. <laughs> no, only, <yeah. laughs> only one. What are you talking about? He retired. Uh, there's another one I never then, heard of. And then he got the phone call and the money was good and then he came back. Is that the reason you came back? No, definitely not. Okay, I was, so tell us. Okay, how did it all go down? Okay, listen. I was in Ibiza, retired yeah. at my last training session. So you say you were what? In Ibiza it, with the family. Retired. Retired. Oh, so you retired. Okay, I retired. Yeah. Last yeah. training session at Saracens. Last dinner. Last benefit dinner. Last game. Won the Harvesting. premiership done. Harvesting. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Hey, I didn't move around like you for cash. I stayed with one club for 10 years at, at Saracens. So anyway, so uh, and I'd be th- having a couple of cold ones, put the kids in bed, having me eat those with the missus. And one thing, well... One thing led to another, or tried to lead to a certain direction, and um, I got a text message from from Rassi, but just one liner: um, "Are you finished?" Or um, <laughs> 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 just rethink what you just no, said, please. It's, it's, it's just it's, really, it's, 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 it's a rephrase. Rephrase. It's your line up. Is, <laughs> is, <you're laying laughs> is are you finished? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm trying to translate and, in English. Okay, you finished? finished? <laughs> Uh, no, I was still on the meat. <laughs> and then, of course, I sent back uh, on the message, John, oh my goodness, you've got a filthy mind. Um, and then I said, no, I'm, I'm the prettiest, strongest, fittest, artist hooker out there. And then I sent a couple of very arrogant messages back that I'll, um, yeah, I'll be amazing and all those kind of things, thinking that it's Vincent Koch on the piss back in, in South Africa. <laughs> And then after like three or four messages, phone the phone Russ and he picked up or I didn't know it was Russ. It was an unknown number. He picked up and I'm like apologizing for being so arrogant. I didn't think it was him. And then that's how I got back in 2018. And we only had 18 months to sort of prepare. We had record losses against Ireland, record losses against um, New Zealand, New that Zealand that as well. Yeah. And what was interesting and I'd ask, the, the, the one question I did pose to ask um, Rassi was, why would you take this job? You're in Munster in a good spot. It's a good so you financial position. That. Yes, because I want to know what his motivation is. Yeah. He says, Scala, I hate seeing the Springboks lose. I think I can add value. And we've got a great squad that, that's willing to learn. And it was sort of that was sort of the turning point. Uh, it was a financial decision. It was all about... <laughs> rugby <laughs> for Rassi <laughs> and myself. Oh. And then I to, oh. Get out and then the way. The yeah. oh. <laughs> well, then you went to the Bulls. Yeah, I forgot about that. Mm. I actually, while you were at the Stormers, I signed at the Stormers. Yeah. And then I was actually signed at the Stormers for two months. Yeah. And then I got a phone call and said, oh, no, actually, text message. Uh, this contract isn't, it's not going to work out. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I've signed. Yeah. It's, all, it's done. And then I actually, then I had to find a new place because I brought my family back to SA, kids back to SA, and it was tricky. And then I had to travel commute to Pretoria, but that was actually amazing playing for the Bulls. So did you enjoy <sighs> like staying away from your family? family yeah, was that no, your family was playing for the yeah. Bulls. Family decision. That's why it was amazing playing for the Bulls. Family decision, but you, <laughs> family you decision. didn't stay with your family. For my beef that you're leaving them in, <laughs> yeah. in Cape Town and you were traveling Jeepers. up and down. What are you, a bachelor? You guys, you guys what, know. Did you enjoy the, the bachelor <laughs> lifestyle or what? <laughs> it was myself and Dwayne. So we both commuted. Okay, now ah. throw your mate, <laughs> throw your mate yeah. in it now. Throw no, your yeah, mate in it now. You can't go yeah. down by yourself. You've got to bring Dwayne down. No, we you. sat in a hotel. I can't flew, believe this. Look, we flew up Monday mornings, back on Wednesdays, up on Fridays, back on Saturdays, depending on what time the game was. Yeah. So it's it was for the bigger course to win a World Cup. Yeah. Mm. We saw a lot during Chasing the Sun. Yeah. Anything else outside of the that, that wasn't shown on TV that was quite spicy? We've heard of some big motivational talks, some videos being sent to you guys pre-England. 
Um, I, I think what, what people don't know is the, the pressure the squad came under with the bomb squad. Yeah. Show me there was a lot of racial tension. Yeah. Uh, personal pl players got personal messages through social media. And as a leader, leadership group, we got together and said, okay, let's send out uh, a unified message to everyone. Yeah. And Rassi, funny enough, Rassi said, that's not the way to do it. I, I say, let, let's get together, show irrelevant of your background, your race, your religion, where you grew up. Let's show the country that, that irrelevant of those background things that we can work together and actually have, show them what to do. And from that perspective, that whole social media thing we pushed aside and just focused on the game and giving hope. And that sort of gave us an extra motivation to win, uh, not win the World Cup, but show the country that we can do it together. Yeah. And that was sort of, I think, quite a catalyst to our success in that World Cup. Yeah. That, that wasn't emphasized so much in Chasing the Sun. Talking about World Cups and key moments there, that quite nice to see the Tongan and Springbok players. You saw the huddle <clears throat> after the game. Yeah, well, I spoke about the, um, the rugby fraternity earlier and then you guys were, oh, yeah, head boy. No, no, now you bring joking, it back. We're joking. Now you like read we're your joking, next card and now suddenly it's no, back joking. on there. That was a joke, <laughs> yeah. Sean. No, I thought I'd bring you back to the rugby oh, fraternity, you. the love shared. Well, you like you know, holding chatting hands. about it. Yeah, you like chatting about it, Check out they organized that plane to fly by. For the show. That's Brian Abana going to work. Oh, that's actually very cool. And his own jet. Yeah, that's that's Brian Abana's <laughs> right. That's Brian Abana's yeah. taxi. This way, Brian. Um, it was a cool moment, eh? Yeah. Seeing the I mean firstly, credit to the Tongans yeah. for the way that they played in that game. Ben uh, Tomafuna, Jeebus. They they were they were up for it. Yeah. Um, you know, Ben had a, a huge game. Um, and a couple of others as well. Uh, you know, so uh, <laughs> we saw some of the Springbok players. Um, the following day, and you, you saw you know, a couple of blue eyes and, and certainly saw bodies. Uh, it's always nice when you see a game that is so physical, so tough, afterwards them coming together and just having a, a little bit of a moment there. So it's the beauty of the game. Yeah. Next weekend, Scotland Island. Should we be nervous, guys, if all teams end up on 15 points? As South African supporters, should we be nervous? Is it, is well, it possible uh, well, that the it unthinkable is. can happen? Well, it is. It is possible, yeah. um, you know. Th there's a mathematical chance, but but then again, I think the last time Scotland beat Ireland was in 2017, and I think the last time they beat them with a bigger margin than 21 points was back in 2001. And I Jeez. think where Ireland has gone since them to since then to where they are now as a team, totally different team. I think the professionalism that we've seen within that squad. Um, the players that they have, the coaching team that they have, I, I just can't see if Scotland plays at their best and Ireland playing at their best, that Scotland can beat Ireland. Yeah. You know, for Scotland to beat Ireland by 21 points, then then I would get some of our Indian cricket playing <laughs> friends to just come <laughs> investigate here because <laughs> then I think there's some underhand money on the way. Sure, are you nervous about it? Uh, no. But, uh, I, I like the way Scotland play. I think they are adventurous with keeping the ball in, uh, in hand. The way they play, they, they've, like, if, like South Africa, they kick a lot. Yeah. Scotland kick, attack from deep. They've got the guts to say, okay, we're going to have a go. Ireland with Andy Farrell's coach, I, I, it was very interesting speaking to some of the players and this was a couple of years ago that Andy had a chat with them and said, listen, we need to discuss the, the, about this, this monkey on our back and what is it? It's we haven't gone past the quarterfinal. And no other coaches in Ireland has ever spoken about it. And Annie Farrell addressed that point. He said, okay, why did we not make it? What must we do different? And what is our aim going into this World Cup? And Annie Farrell has taken that, I would say, it's probably going to be shot for this, but it always felt like Ireland had a soft underbelly, underbelly going, yeah. going into when the, the pressure gets tough. Um, or it, there's a lot of pressure. And from that perspective, I, when I saw they played... All, um, South Africa, that first 20 minutes for me, they got physically dominated. They lost five lineouts or six lineouts, and they changed their lineout structure, the way they played, and they just kept on going and knew that they had the belief to beat South Africa. And that is why I think Scotland's going to have a hard time to, to also, beat also, how, how does Scotland beat Ireland? Though? Also, I'll just uh, before I get to that, they, yeah. they score more points. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> be, before, um, before we get to that, that as well. <laughs> 
also remember that that um, Ireland's on this winning streak. Okay, yeah. so if they they win this Isn't weekend, that added pressure though? yeah, they get well. You never know. You get to eighteen. Yeah. Um, it, it becomes you know, an issue when people start counting. You, you know what it's exactly. like at Winning Street. You get there, you know, and the moment people start counting, then it becomes a problem. But for them, there's a lot yeah. to play for. Yeah. Um, you know, to 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 get to that 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 streak and past it. So, um, I think the pride of any any single any you know there are talks of yeah Ireland will just go and throw the game or something like that. I just can't see that happening at all. The pride that you have doesn't matter what team you play for. To play in a World Cup, to to represent your country, um, they will do whatever is needed to to get past that game, get the points they need, and then you know but, walk away. So, Scott, this is when you start sweating now, because a couple of months ago, you said Ireland are going to flop. Yes. That last answer you changed your mind now. No, no, you still stand by the, that. The, the one thing I do. Well, why are you start? Uh, the one <laughs> thing I would say is, how did Scotland do it? If Johnny Sexton, if he's not playing. That it's a different side. Yeah, he's he he's the puppet master in that team, and that is the one player that I feel like we can lose a couple of players with depth, and there's a replacement. Yeah, um, but with Sixteen is irreplaceable. He's irreplaceable for them. Yeah, and from that perspective, it is if he goes off, anything can happen, and that that is the one player that I think if Ireland loses, there might be a chance. Uh, uh, hopefully not, Scotland can win. Would you say the same about Dupont being the irreplaceable one for France? Yeah, I had a debate yesterday with Marsh about it. I said I feel exactly the same. France is not the same. Did player you have a debate? Uh, but you feel exactly the same. No, we had a debate. I feel yeah. exactly the same about Dupont as Sexton. Oh. That Dupont is so good. France is not the same team without him. South Africa, for example, if we play a ninety-nine point nine fact that I just made up, yeah. um, if. South Africa put a lot of pressure, kick pressure on their nines. The punt kicks of both feet. It is extremely hard, hard to stop. Yeah. To stop because you can't you, you can't put two guys on each on each other of the rack to, to stop the kick, to make it a flatter kick. And France kick a longer kick than most. The punt kicks it longer than most nines. So it, it is. I, I would totally agree with that. And to my fact, if they play New Zealand, which is most likely in the quarterfinal. Island, yeah. Uh, Ireland's playing New Zealand. Yeah, uh, I feel sl slowly but surely you want to peak, not in the pool stages, but at the quarterfinal, semifinal, and final. And last thing, Ireland must has pl been playing the first team squad the whole time to go through all the pool stages. Some players, I think McCloskey hasn't played a game yet. Am I right? Yeah, I, th I think yeah, there's one or two. There's one or two that, that have played. Squad that hasn't played but, at okay, all. Okay, let's talk about peaking now. All Blacks, Italy. Yeah. Did the All Blacks need a game <coughs> like that? Because it was loose, it was like watching a, a super rugby game, or they needed a tough grind. No, look, because uh, well, it's not going to be like that in a playoff. In the, only, in the yeah, only, game. only time will tell. Um, but but for them, you can certainly see a um, the the pride coming through. You know, they the, the, obviously the week off for the All Blacks. I think they they had some downtime to to think and talk about where they're at as a squad and, and what they represent and where they want to go. Um, you know, and you, you kind of saw that coming through in that performance against Italy. Um, it was a it, statement game, Italy, look. Italy wasn't a match at all. And, yeah. and even, you know, speaking to a couple of guys, Italy was kind of full of talk pre-game, and which is kind of unlike them saying that they've got a chance or whatever, where when you're in a big game like that, you kind of want to hold back and, and, and show respect and say, you know, we'll be up for the challenge because they weren't able to deliver on what they were saying pre-game from an Italian point of view. Whereas New Zealand were just spot on in everything that they did. To answer your question in terms of was that the game they needed going into a into a quarterfinal? Probably not. They probably needed a, a, a hard game. grind, yeah. Um, yeah, put under pressure because uh, unfortunately from their point of view, the two games that they've been put under pressure, which is um, against, against France in the opening game and against South Africa pre-World Cup, they weren't able to 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 take in that pressure and 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 make the right decisions and execute under pressure. So um, th they didn't feel any pressure in that Italian game. Yes, they were able to play the the expansive game, but if they come up against Ireland, totally different ball game, totally different circumstances, and certainly not the time that they would have on the ball that they had against Italy. Guys, let's talk elephant in the room: England. Slowly going about their business, winning playing knockout rugby, the, you know, the old Saracens way. Yeah. One or two selection issues. 
you, you played with Farrell a lot. Does he make the, the, the starting 15 for you? Did you not punch Owen Farrell yeah, let's talk about, when you actually, played let's talk, that's for more the Barbarians yeah, against the Why Lions? did you pick on a fly off? Why did you pick on your teammate? Yeah. Fly uh, off and he, teammate, and you, you try to throw Dwayne under the bus. No. <laughs> team. <laughs> team. Team. Man. Team. Team. Man. Team. Man. That's why I get nervous when he talks about rugby's like, values. <laughs> like, you know, we were in different sides. We wore different jerseys. I played yeah. Barbarians. He played for the Lions. Yeah. Things sometimes get eaten. And, um, and then you punch... Your teammate. It was more slap than a punch. Um, but anyway, and the next tour that we went together as Saracen's teammates, yeah. we were roommates. Oh. Um, so, you know, you make up. It's like things like fighting okay, with what, your okay, wife. Talk us through That's the fight. What, what actually happened? He pulled your jersey or what, what was it again? Was that the side of a rack? Eh? Uh, it was the side of a rack. Um, You're sweating extra now, you know. Yeah. No, not yet. Um, why are you tapping your foot uh, up and down? Are you nervous? <laughs> That's a sign that you're nervous. Yeah. Why, why, why is it? Eh? So anyway, so we made up and like most things, it carried on. Okay, what what happened? What what caused the fight? I, I, I've got a pet hate for someone pulling my shirt. Okay. Is and that why you're not wearing a shirt? <laughs> <laughs> pulling it. Uh, yeah. This is in France. You do what the French do. Oh, we, go we, to the we, beach. We, we, but we. You, you said it's the best punch you've ever thrown there. He said that off air, John. He did say that. <laughs> <laughs> he said it's the well, best punch you've ever thrown. Uh, they, uh, look, I'm not a dirty player. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not a dirty player. Come on, no, let's move on. Move on move but on. does he make the start? It's, it's a difficult one yeah, because, okay. I mean, we debated this. He is the captain. You know, Ford shooting the lights out. Obviously, they, they've rotated a bit now. Quarterfinals coming up. Chances are they play Fiji. Fiji beat yeah. um, Portugal, am I right? Yeah, Fiji needs need to, need to be, be Portugal. Portugal. Yeah, they play Fiji in the quarterfinal. Who, who's your England backline? Okay, well, firstly, I'm gonna go it was running into the World Cup. People must know Alad was the Springbok SNC um, yeah. um, part of the SNC, or he was running. Alad the SNC. He was an yeah. SNC, yeah. SNC coach. Coach. Yeah. That's so. so the the one thing that he did what, that people don't know during re, le, leading up to the World Cup is. He said, boys, we're going to maximize every effort we can. We're not going to taper into games. Yeah. Maybe your performance won't be as good on the weekends, but we'll, peak. Be, we'll peak at the World Cup. And, and that is what you've seen. They've gone to a more... The performance wasn't great against Argentina, yeah. but they had 40 men. They played a conservative style. George Ford ran that game. And it's hard to judge if Argentina was just very crap on the day or, or England was... Um, phenomenal in how they played with 14 men. Leading up into the World Cup, quickly, just saying, I feel they, they're peaking, same almost, well, they, they, they're playing they better rugby. Upward, yeah, upward, uh, curve, upward yeah. curve. On who I will pick, I will pick, although people love to hate him, I'll pick Andy um, Owen Farrell every day. He All is day. the most competitive individual I know, and I do not like the 10-12 combination of Ford and Owen. Um, the, so Owen at, at, ten, at, at, at 10, 10 and then Tulangi at 12. 100%. John, you've always said you like that combo. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't move two guys to, you know, and then weaken the positions if they, you know, just to create space for someone. Look, the, the one thing people don't realize with this English team, it's the same team that played in Japan. If you, if you go through the front row, I think George Cruz has gone up, but the loose forwards are generally the same and it's the same back line. So there's plenty of experience in terms of World Cups yeah, and handling the, the pressure final. there. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, look, the, the, so I think you need to ask the question, though, just the mental space that they're in. Yeah. Um, and it is four years later for, for, for those players. Like yes, most they, World Cups, yeah. Yes, four, they play, four years, yeah, yeah. yes, they're playing a, um, a game plan that is suited to the World Cup, you know, defensively strong and a good kicking game. But do they have the players that can actually win it? You know, if yeah. they come up against a France, an Ireland... There's a bit more pressure. The uh, scum goes Africa, back a bit. Yes, you, know, you struggle a bit more. Yeah. And even New Zealand. And and I still have my doubts, you know. But then again, you win your quarterfinal. You find yourself in a semifinal on the day. You know, you get a bit of luck, and suddenly you're in a, in a World Cup final. But you um, have a doubt. But they beat Australia in the 2019. They beat New Zealand with the same players. They just got. Yeah, but that's four years ago. Yeah, but I I still think that that pack. Can for, deliver. For, for, for me, what's, they've just quietly gone about their business. You know, you haven't heard a lot about England. They're going to be in a quarter, you know, against Fiji. Respectfully speaking, you know, yeah. we've got France. And, you know, New Zealand have got Ireland. They've got Fiji. Chance they get through right. to a semi, then mm. you're, you're a step away from being in a final yeah. again. Yeah. 
Was that, was that a question or a statement? No, it was a statement. Now let's talk prediction. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Quarterfinals. Um, let's look at it. Let's say South Africa play France. Yes. We, well, oh, are you going to sit on the uh, fence again? No, are you no, going to no, give no, us no, permutations no, here? Yes. Let's talk permutations here. Yeah. Permutations it's, it's, or it's, predictions? I must say, look, uh, predictions. Yes. So who wins between South Africa no, and we, we're France? Say yes. South, we all yeah. say South Africa. We will. But it's going to be the hardest game the Springboks have ever played in. It's, it's going to be the home nation. One hell of a game. This whole country is going to be against What we haven't touched on, and, and we experienced it a little bit when, when South Africa played Tonga, is the, um, the French crowd. Yeah. So we saw a, bit, Incredible. There, a yeah. lot of neutrals at the game. Um, you heard the French anthem being sung a couple of times, and, and you, kind of, you kind of get used to, okay, what you're going to face in that quarterfinal. It's going to be next level. It's going to be 10x when you get to, um, uh, to the quarterfinal playing France at, uh, you know, in Paris. So that, that gives them another five, six points. Um, and the 50, but, it, but also from a side, yeah. we, we know what it's like as a South, South African has been in a corner. Yeah. We, we love that space. I, I think we'll be up for the challenge. I think it's going to be one hell of a game, South Africa what, taking it. Show me what I do like about playing France is their kicking game is a long kicking game. The same as Wales, uh, they, they, they do not kick up and unders. They might yeah. change strategy. We've got now an extremely exciting back line or back three to counter. Yeah. And that would actually suit us the deeper kicks. And from that perspective, yes, it's like, going to be like competitive. the game last year at, yeah. at, at, yeah. um, at the Villadrome. Yeah. 100%. Mm. So from that perspective, that gives me hope. And I think we'll, ma well, they will try to match us in the in the tight tight five or in the yeah. packs, and I don't think they've got advantage on this. It's just can we break their defence down and put the set piece under pressure? Ireland versus New Zealand. I'm still going New Zealand. Yeah. And then my prediction, because I have to back it, because if I, <laughs> if I say Ireland, my, um, then I can't no, predict my prediction. <laughs> you go back, I'm going to say, hold on, you said uh, yeah. Ireland are going to flop in this yeah. World Cup. But I do think, I must say, the, the underbelly they, uh, that I thought, the soft underbelly, when they played South Africa, I, uh, I was quite surprised at how tough that Irish side Shami, is. Yeah. do you get nervous when he speaks about that soft underbelly? <laughs> <laughs> Who are going with this? <laughs> Well, we, uh, you, 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 hey, it's a nice tour. You, you, it's <laughs> how long have you been well, on tour? Wait a second. Breathe. <laughs> what do you breathe, mean? brother. Hold a second. <laughs> breathe. Your legs are getting smaller and smaller. Because <laughs> your upper body's getting bigger, that's why. I don't know. I don't yeah? know about that. Are we going to talk about the other two quarterfinals <laughs> okay. as well? Um, it's going to be Wales, Argentina, possibly Wales, Argentina, Japan. Uh, Argentina. Oh, Argentina. 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 Argentina and too many pina coladas. Wales. <laughs> no. Argentina and Japan. Argen we, we Argentina, all, Japan. Okay, who wins that one? This weekend determines who the second uh, qualifying team would be in that pool. Argentina. Go. Boom. Yes, Argentina's been the most disappointing team at this they World were. Cup. Um, yes. They haven't shown, I think, the quality that they have, but I'll also back them. I, I also don't think Japan is the team that they that played, you know, four years ago and the quality, they've lost a lot of quality. England, Fiji? England. England, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> no upset. Oh, 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 so oh, then, is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then semis would be then if South Africa win, New Zealand win, England win, Wales, it would be, we would play. It's a trick question because I don't know. Actually, if we played England in the semis. I can't remember which way it is. Yeah. Does winner, I don't know. It depends who comes first, second, uh, well, England's first. Okay, we'll mix it up. Yeah. New Zealand would win the semi, South Africa win the semi, then okay. we meet we'll in the final. We'll just edit it in. Yeah, we'll we'll edit it in. we we'll exactly meet in the final. Oh, we'll we, we meet in the final, we beat yeah. New Zealand in the, in the final, and then double World Cup winners. Double? Yeah. Back to back. Back to back. Oh, That's what I mean. Yes. Back to back. Cool. Scala? Yes, you Your favorite moment so far of the World Cup? Favorite player and favorite player? Favorite player? I, I'm going to stick because this is the, the kind of grief he came under for selection and playing from flank. I'm going to go South African. And the reason why is he fulfilled a similar role than I did in 2019. He's now filling in 2023. There was an injury. He's gone, although the last test match he's ever played at hooker or game was starting was in 2018. Now it's Dion Fourier. 
at Man of the Match this past weekend. By all accounts, he's it's loving the show at in um, in the spring box. And he's added a lot of value for him to come well, from that position. Well, you got Man of the Match. 100%. So for me, man of the Match, yeah. Uh, it's to change position, people uh, to go from two to eight is easy, but going from seven or eight to two is hard. Yeah. I John, wouldn't know. You, I wouldn't you're know. off, you're, you're like, off home soon, by the way. Yeah, I am. Um, I, yeah, let's talk about your, your four weeks here. Your, your favorite moment. I'll tell you what it is from, you know, Fiji when, 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 when that book came in Bordeaux can I, and we pulled, <laughs> pulled the credit cards out. Well, guess guess, guess his credit card, the, guess his bank I, card got pulled out. Well, game wise. for dinner. Well done. Who guess who paid for dinner in you, Bordeaux? No, he's never he's still paying for, for it. He is he's still, still to for pay it. for a dinner, a drink, anything, a cab. But you know what this guy's like? You know, but you know, I do. You know what it's like with his anxiety after a big night yeah. when but he goes I, down through that downward slope? I do have a I beautiful video on my phone of Shimmy first night. <laughs> okay, let's leave it. In my let's leave it. Please, can we just... You know, no, 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 I can't wait. No, was no, he no, wearing no, a shirt or no, no shirt? No. Yeah, have you seen that movie Moto Moto? <laughs> 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 it's, <laughs> it's your first show. Shut up. Okay, he's talking sorry. too much. It's your first show. Favorite game? Look, Australia Fiji. That I would say was my favorite Whoa, game. Whoa, favorite game? Jeez, that's a good one. Eh? I'm, I still haven't answered my question. Okay, sorry. what? You, okay. Uh, so, so after this last weekend, Ben Tamafuna. Oh, wow. He was amazing. Eh? Yeah. Crowd favorite. At 180 kilograms to run like that. No, no, 150. Scrim. Let's not exaggerate. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no. <laughs> oh, so you're heavier than him, Shimmy. <laughs> 150 <laughs> kilograms. Jeez, it's like. And a great <laughs> interview <laughs> afterwards. I and mean, then you've got a 75 kg hooker as well. Uh, I'm cutting down. Hooker flank. The same. Yeah. Also, hooker prop. Hooker prop. You are a center flank. Center wing. No, center wing. So, 13, 14, uh, 15. How do you manage to be bigger now than when you played? Well, I'm not. Just, you are, like size-wise. Your legs are smaller. No, my legs are bigger. That's mm. just how John, no, you, you highlight your highlight to the trip. Um, you're a bit quick. I, I, I love Bordeaux. Yeah. The experience of Bordeaux, first time there. Um, you know, again, that's, a, that's the beauty of the job. You get to experience the world, see new places. And Bordeaux was new, vibey. I'll definitely recommend that to anyone. And hopefully I can get back there one day. You might be back also, am I right? Like the Terminator. You might be back. <laughs> might be back. You might be back. Your World Cup's not over yet. Oh, and your plans see. when you get back home, you go back in studio. Yeah, I'll be back in studio. Scala, when are you off? Uh, on Sunday to London. Or Saturday to London. Then hopefully watch uh, Arsenal versus Man City with my boys. Okay, and the brilliant. Misses. Well, Arsenal supporter. I'm Arsenal. My middle child hunter is Man City. Wow. Yeah, I failed miserably, and the other two kids is uh, Christian and Luke as is, is, is Spurs supporters. Cool. Don't forget to download the Fantasy app on the World Rugby site, and also a shout out to Nick, who's struggling with terminal cancer. All the best, mate. Um, we know you're a fan of, of the box office. We're thinking of you here. From Jean Skalk, um, the other Skalk Burger, and everybody that's been on the show, all the best. We wish you all the best, brother, and stay strong. So this is from the box office. Thanks for supporting us. We'll give you a thumbs up. So thank you very much. Best, and uh, on that note, gentlemen, Jean. Just show me how's the sweat. Tra tra travel safely. The sweat's there. <laughs> travel safely. Are you safely. just the show? No, let's keep travel going, man. Travel safely with your two wives right. and your eight kids. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you enjoy France. Um, thank you. Yeah. Saracens. Uh, sorry, not London. Man City, Arsenal. I'm an Arsenal supporter, so hopefully Arsenal do the job. Yeah. There we go. We agree Cute. on something. And Cute. the box office is now closed. Boom. <laughs> <laughs>